Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica and I make videos all about making and selling candles. If you guys are interested in checking out what my Etsy shop looks like or if you wanna see any of my merch designs, go ahead and check out the first links in the description box below. Today's video is gonna be all about wax melt samples and tea lights. So I'm gonna be going over formulas, packaging, how I make them, uh, where I get everything. I probably won't do a visual demonstration for you guys, but I will be telling you every little detail um, so that you guys will be able to make your own. Also, stay tuned for the end of this video where I will be updating you guys on the burn test results for my blended wax tens that I had made a couple weeks ago. I promised you guys I would show you guys some burn tests, so um, stay tuned for the end for me to add in that footage. All right, so we're gonna jump right into the formulas for everything and we're gonna start with the wax melt samples. So this is what the wax melt samples look like. It's just a single cavity um, for the clamshell mold. And on the website, it says that the fill weight is 14 grams or 0.5 ounces. And I choose to do about 12.5 grams for the fill weight. And that's just because I don't like the look of it um, or also when pouring it, of having it overflow to the top. I've had too many instances where it just overflows and I don't like it. Um, so I like and prefer it to be filled up to about right there on it. If you can see, there's a little bit of room extra on the top and that's about 12.5 grams for the fill weight. Now when you're making samples, um, it's not really realistic or possible, um, if I could stretch it that far and say that it wouldn't really be possible to make one of these at a time. You want to make a good amount at a time. And in this example, I'm gonna be talking about making six at a time because that's the equivalent of making one of these wax melts. So if you can see that these are basically the same size at making the same amount as one wax melt would fill up six of these. So what I would do is I would do 12.5 times six because we're gonna be making six of them and that equals 75 grams. So this would be the new fill weight because you're able to just multiply by however many you're making. So if I'm making six of these, I would take the fill weight, multiply it by six and now our new fill weight is going to be 75 grams. So with the formula that I do, I would do 75 divided by 115% and that gives us 65.2 grams, but of course I'm just gonna round down to make it a whole number. And then that is going to be our wax weight. So we know that 65 is gonna be the wax weight. 75 minus 65 equals 10 grams. So it is 65 grams for the wax weight. And then 10 grams for the fragrance oil weight. And again, this formula right here is the same formula I use to make one wax melt. So whenever I am making sample sizes that will fit up in these little clamshell molds, I will typically never just make these on itself. It's usually alongside making wax melts. So when I make wax melts, I usually make six of these at a time, but if I'm wanting to do some samples, I will make eight of these and then fill up 12 of these little sample sizes. So now we're gonna move on to the formula for the tea lights and something I didn't mention when I was talking about this, but that hopefully was implied, is that when you guys are making something that is this small, it doesn't matter if it's this small or this big, you can do the same percentage. So as you could see, you're able to still do 15%, which is what I did here, and you're able to put 15% fragrance oil in this little sample size. It doesn't matter because it's going to be the correct uh, fragrance oil to wax ratio being 15%. So you don't have to worry about looking at this and being like, can I fit 15% in here? You can. Um, it doesn't matter about the size of the container, it just matters about the wax that you're using. Now for tea lights, um, I usually make about 10 of these at a time. So for tea lights, um, these also have a fill weight of 14 grams and I actually do the 14 grams on here because the difference is that I sell these in packs. So I wanna make sure that the fill weight is accurate. I don't want to shortcut the customer and do less. I wanna make sure that it is 14 grams. So as you can see on here, this is much more full than what it looked like on my little, little sample clamshell. So for this calculation, what we would do is we would just take 14 grams and multiply it by 10. So 14 
16 times 10 is 140. So that is our new fill weight that we are going to be doing because we're going to be doing enough to make 10 of these. So I'm going to divide this by 110%. And that gives us 127.2. Again, we're just going to round that down because I like whole numbers. So that is our wax weight, 127. So we're just going to subtract the wax weight from the net weight. And that gives us the fragrance oil weight. So we are looking at 127 grams of wax weight and 13 grams of fragrance oil weight. And as you guys can see, the formula is going to be the same that you would when you're making a candle. So when you're making these little sizes, you don't have to worry about doing this crazy different formula. Just if you're using the same wax, the same fragrance oil, and the same fragrance oil percentage that you typically would to make a candle, um, you can make tea lights. You just have to make sure that you're making enough for the fill weight, that it's going to be the correct ratio of 10% of the fragrance oil to the wax, and that these two numbers combine to equal the uh, fill weight, so that you will be able to evenly distri distribute out the wax and you will have a correct amount when you're filling them up. All right, now for the fun part. So this is what my packaging looks like with a sticker. I do 1.25 inch circles and I design and print it out myself on my store label designer through online labels. Um, of course, I get the labels from online labels and this is just matte paper. And I really like this better than the glossy because it's so much cheaper. And um, I don't know, I just like the look of it. So I think that it looks really nice. It looks cute and simple and I really like it. And then this is how I decided to pack up my tea lights. Now I had um, a tough time trying to find tea light boxes that I really liked. Um, these were just kind of a last minute choice, um, but I ended up actually pretty much liking these. Um, they're a little flimsy, but they come in two different pieces. So I taped it down on the side over here and I used tape that is way too sticky. Um, but again, I was kind of running out of time, so I needed to go get something. Um, but this is what my tea, tea lights look in here. Um, and then again, the box comes in two different pieces that you just push together and um, tape it down on the side. And then this size label, I mean, honestly, you guys don't just be like, oh my God, I have to get that size label. Get any size label. I just use this size because it's what I had on hand and it's what I use for my tins. Um, and I don't exactly remember what size this is, but I will leave it in the description box below. Um, and again, I get it from online labels and this is a glossy label. Um, if you can kind of see, but I did actually use um, the 1.25 inch circle labels for the bottom to just indicate which scent is which. Um, I do also like the look where the scent is right here on the side. Um, this is just kind of what I had at the time. And then I have my warning label right there as well. Um, I kind of customized it a little bit more to talk about tea lights and not just candles in general. Um, and then, yeah, so this is, pretty much the whole packaging of here, um, the little tape on the sides, but this box, I believe, this box is four and five eighths inches by three and one eighth inches by three fourths of an inch. Um, that was a mouthful. So this actually holds the size of the tea lights pretty well. Um, there are a few things about it that can kind of get a little weird and I kind of feel like I'm just shoving them in here. But I also tried this box from clearboxes.com and these ones um, didn't necessarily work for me very well. I felt like the tea lights are just kind of um, rummaging around in here too much, just the, the dimensions are off. So I don't know if you can see, but there's just so much room in here, even with this closed. This is what this looks like. So if you guys don't mind this and you kind of want to just not have as much plastic and just have this um, window coating right here, I'll also leave a link to this one too if you guys are interested in it. Um, but I just kind of, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't really want this to be kind of, you know, all over the place. Um, I like that these ones don't move in here. All right, now we are going to move on to the burn results of the candles that I made in this video. If you guys have not seen that video already, I will leave a card up here in the top right so you guys can go watch that video before you watch this one. 
All right, so I'm about to do the first burn test on these candles, and I cut down the wicks pretty low to about an eighth of an inch, um, and I was just kind of inspecting what the top of the candles look like. So pretty smooth tops. However, on this one right over here, the blend of CCS12 and BW921, there's cracking by the wick. So I found that kind of interesting just looking at it and thinking, okay, I don't know how this is gonna do, so we'll kind of find out. And um, something else to mention is that I'm not going to be testing out hot throw because I'm lighting them all next to each other. So this is just testing the melt pool and seeing how they do. All right, so this is what it's looking like after about an hour and 15 minutes in. So I like to just look at how the flames are doing. And to be honest, guys, I was really worried that cutting it down to an eighth of an inch was gonna be way too short. But now looking at it after an hour, um, it's actually looking pretty good. The one on the right, the flames look pretty strong. Um, the two on the left, still a little low, but not concerning. Um, so as I'm looking at what the melt pool looks like, what I found interesting with that one is that you can really see a definitive line of where the unmelted wax is um, versus these ones. So these ones look a little bit softer. Um, if you can kind of see more of that harder wax on the edges and then the ones on the left it's a lot more softer um, and the one in the middle you can't really tell as much of a difference as you can on the one on the left so I found these blends and the way that it was performing just even after an hour really interesting um, so I'm gonna let these go for another hour and then we'll come back to them and see how they're doing Okay, so now we have reached hour two. So I went ahead and just kind of looked at the top of all these to see how they were doing. And the blend all the way over to the right right there, you can see that it's basically at full melt. The one in the middle, you can still see some wax on the edges, so it hasn't reached it yet. And then you can definitely see on that one on the left that it has not reached full melt yet. And the reason why the flames are flickering so much is because I have the AC on. It's summertime, it's really hot. It was really hard to not do this test without AC, so that's why. Okay, so we got some pretty interesting results. This is at hour three. So as you can see, um, the two tins on the left, so the left one in the middle, um, really nice flames going on, calm flames. Obviously the AC was not on during that time. But the one on the right, the mixture of the CCS number 12 and the BW921, it's starting to burn itself out. So I don't know if this is the cause of the cinnamon and vanilla fragrance oil that I used, or if it's just an indication that that blend of a 50-50 blend between those does not work. Um, so I did like how the other two were performing, the one in the middle um, still, actually both of them have not reached full melt yet. So um, I'm gonna let this go for another hour and then check up on it again and then see how they're doing. Um, so we're gonna see next. Okay, so now it's been about four hours and 10 minutes, and as you can see, it burned itself out, and there's still a tiny flame going on the left. Um, so I just thought that was really interesting how in the beginning the flames were really good, now it burned itself out. And um, these candles over here are doing really well. The one in the middle is at full melt, um, and then the one on the left, there's a tiny bit on the side still. Um, so I thought that those were performing really well. It seemed like the, beeswa the beeswax helped to harden up the wax to make it um, burn better. It is now the next day and we're doing the second round of burn test on these. So what I did was I just did a little bit of a trim on these and then lit them and I'm gonna let them go um, for three hours and then come back to it after three hours so you guys can see how it does. I really don't think the candle on the right is gonna do that well. All right, so this is at about three hours. Um, the one on the left looks the best. One on the middle looks pretty good, but the one on the right looks really weird, and the wax on the edges looks really weird too. So um, this is what it's looking like after three hours. All right, now we are going to be doing the third and final burn for this video. Um, obviously, I'm gonna burn it a little bit more off camera, but I wanted to show you guys at least three burns because I feel like that's more important to show more than just the first burn because you can tell a lot more from the candle itself. Um, I did go through and I trimmed these down a little bit um, before I lit them, so I'm gonna let them go for a couple hours and we'll come back to it. So this is after two hours of this burn test and the one on the left and in the middle recently hit full melt and the one on the right I think is just a lost cause. 
All right, so this is after three hours, and if you take a look at the one in the middle, this is the most important one, you can see all the way to the bottom. So that's telling me that this is burning way too hot. So that blend is still not hard enough to make it to where it's not going to get too hot. However, the one on the left is what's really impressing me the most. So I think I'm going to play around with this blend more than any of the other ones. Right, this is the end of the video and I realized during editing that I forgot to film an outro. So I just wanted to thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I always appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to watch my videos. So I really do appreciate it. If you guys have any further questions, always feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.